Hello, I am Dr. Scott Drumheller. This videotape has been produced to better familiarize you with the procedure of arthroscopy. The information in this tape will help you understand your surgery as well as what is expected of you postoperatively. Hopefully, this information will alleviate any of your fears as well as answer your questions. Here we are in a typical operating room where you will be having your surgery. We'd like to show you the instruments. The arthroscope is approximately four millimeters wide and the lens at the tip is angled 30 to 70 degrees to visualize all parts of your joint. The arthroscope is connected to a light source for illumination of the interior of the joint. A camera is connected to the arthroscope which allows viewing the procedure on a video monitor. At the same time, a tape is made to document the problem and its correction. Other instruments include the probe for examining tissue to see if they are damaged, the shaver which trims tissue, and the scissors for cutting tissue. The procedure of shoulder arthroscopy requires you to be on your side with your arm up in the air. Your shoulder is examined right after the anesthesia is given. Once the examination is complete, small stab incisions are made and fluid is run into your shoulder to distend the joint. The arthroscope is then placed into your shoulder from behind. Once the arthroscope is in place, the first structures we look at are the humeral head, or the ball, the glenoid, or the cup, and the biceps tendon. We look to see if the ball is spherical, or if there is any damage to the cup. Then we look at the labrum, which is the soft tissue that may be torn from the cup when the shoulder is dislocated. Also, we note the biceps tendon, which can be involved with tendonitis. The rotator cuff tendons are also inspected to determine whether a partial or complete tear may be present. Instruments are inserted into the shoulder as needed. Either the probe, shaver, or cutters are inserted to do the actual operation. The space above the rotator cuff is also inspected in some patients. This space is known as a subacromial space because it lies below the acromion bone. Here we look for evidence of impingement or tightness of the rotator cuff. Impingement can occur when the arm is brought up from behind the head, forcing the rotator cuff and the subacromial bursa to impinge on the encrobion. The treatment for this problem involves raising the roof, so to speak, by shaving away bone from the undersurface of the acromion and releasing a tight ligament. This allows more room for the structures and therefore eliminates the impingement. At the end of the operation, the joint is washed out and a local anesthetic is injected to make you more comfortable. As the local anesthetic wears off, you will notice more aching in your shoulder. This usually occurs the following day. The incisions closed with sterile strips and a sterile dressing is applied. With this or any other type of surgery, problems or complications can occur. While the great majority of patients experience partial or complete relief of their pain or dysfunction, some unsuccessful results do occur. These are rare and are listed below. Persistent pain despite the surgery. Infection. Injury to nerve or blood vessels. Stiffness, especially when ligament reconstruction or capsular repairs are done. Blood clot formation. Instrument breakage. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy, which is a rare nerve dysfunction. Further development of arthritis. Persistent muscle weakness about the shoulder, and possibly other problems such as instability. This concludes the description of joint arthroscopy and its possible, however unlikely, side effects. We would like you now to concentrate on getting back to a normal lifestyle. To hasten this process, we would like you to follow some simple guidelines. Your dressing may be removed the day following surgery unless you are instructed otherwise. Your shoulder may be moved through a range of motion as tolerated. Sometimes we may ask that you remain in a sling if certain procedures were done. Use the pain medication if discomfort occurs. Do not drive a car or drink alcohol if you take the pain medication. You may shower the second day after surgery if your wounds look clean. Only allow water to run across the incisions, but do not scrub them. Place band-aids over the incisions to keep them clean. Exercise is very important for your recovery from shoulder surgery, and typically it is done with the physical therapist. 
We will prescribe physical therapy for you when you come for your first follow-up visit several days after surgery. If any problems arise before your follow-up, please call me at 561-694-7776. Please schedule your follow-up appointment as indicated on your discharge instruction papers from the outpatient surgery department. Please follow these guidelines that we have just described. I hope this tape has been helpful for you and has answered any of your questions. I wish you a fast and speedy recovery. Now you will see the videotape of your own surgery.
tear there. This is arthritis. And you can see it down here on the glenoid as well. The la anterior labrum is torn. Looks like you have some damage to the supraspinatus tendon right here, which is part of the rotator cuff. So far, this shoulder is looking worse than the other side. Hold the blue, please. First of all, we'll put the shaver in. I'm going to start cleaning this up. I need some slack. There you go. Okay, Let the probe again. You can see your biceps tendon right there. And here's the rest of the rotator cuff. You have a suction for me? Okay, that remaining rotator cuff look as, looks like it's in pretty good shape. And there's the biceps tendon. Can I have a shave again, please? Looks like the labrum is a little detached. Once I finish this part of the procedure, we'll put the scope in above the rotator cuff and we, we'll go fishing for bone spurs. Okay. Okay, I'm now in the subacromial space, and it looks like lots of bursitis up here and impingement. So what we're going to do first is clean this up. We'll come back on after we have a little bit more done. Let's just take off the undersurface of the acromion that's offending because of the impingement. I take that all the way over to the AC joint. Lisa? The AC joint is right there. You can see it moving. It looks pretty good.
No microscopic bleeding is expected. Okay, let's go back to the other side. back to the burr. It's a little piece there, the ligament. See the rotator cuff is down below, down in this area. We just have to do some housekeeping here, and we'll be finished. It's one little area that looks a little rough. Okay, this is all we have to do now. Charles, I'm just going to wash the joint out. So we're going to stop your tape here. I wish you speedy recovery and get back to bowling in no time.